In today's show, we're focusing on one of the most critical techniques a fly fisher must master to be successful, nymphing. It is widely accepted that trout find 80 to 90% of their diet below the surface. Though some of that is eating bait fish and other species, the bulk of the food is invertebrates and other aquatic insects which they pick off in the feeding lanes. Before we discuss insect activity, we must understand where fish hold in order to feed. The anatomy of a stream is generally very straightforward. Fish will gravitate to those locations that provide the ideal security, water temperature, oxygen and food. Trout hold in different parts of the stream based on the mechanics of moving water. They want to have all their basic survival requirements met with the least amount of energy expended. In most streams and rivers, the primary location for finding fish based on these needs are riffles, runs, pools, pocket water, and seams. Dissecting each of these different fish locations would take more time than we have in this program. However, of all the fish holding locations, seams are probably the most common and effective place to locate trout. Seams are usually created by differing water speeds or by deflection of stream current off structure, such as boulders or log jams. Seams can be readily identified by visible changes in water speed. Often foam lines will help you determine where the seam is located in slower water. Fish will usually hold in slow water adjacent to fast water because that allows them to have access to food and still exert minimal energy to maintain their station. For nymph fishers, this is the ideal place to start searching for fish with a nymph pattern. Fish will lay where it's almost a void. It doesn't take a whole lot of energy for the fish to lay there. So this is where I'm going to place my fly, along the seam, right along here. I'm going to try to dead drift it and follow along with the rod tip. It is important to keep the cast short and lift the line off the water, following along with the rod tip at the same speed the indicator is traveling on the surface. It's as important to have a drag-free drift when fishing a nymph, similar to when fishing a dry fly. Micro drag must be avoided, if at all possible, as this will impact your success ratio. I think I might put a little more weight on here. I don't think I'm quite making it to the bottom fast enough. Now, anything that moves that indicator, whether the indicator slows down, sometimes you get lucky and it goes under the surface, sometimes it moves a little bit sideways, and sometimes it's just a, a feeling you got. Set the hook. It could be the rock on the bottom, but it could be the biggest fish of your life. You never know until you set the hook. Ooh, that was a good hit. I was a little slow on that one. Moving water that has ideal conditions for invertebrate insect life is also usually perfect for trout. Aquatic insects such as mayflies, Caddis and stoneflies all need clean, well oxygenated and generally cool water. Each of these insects has a differing life cycle and means of emerging. The nymphal stage of an invertebrate, such as a mayfly, composes 99% of their life cycle. As a nymph, they are rarely seen by trout as they hide beneath stones or burrowed into the bottom to avoid predation. This is one reason why trout will readily take a nymph tumbling in the current. When a mayfly wants to emerge during a hatch, this is when trout really get turned on. Trout will lay in feeding lanes greedily gobbling the emerging mayflies, such as Betis or Isonychia as they struggle in the current to reach the surface. It is the nymphal or pupal stage that fly fishers wish to imitate with their patterns and presentations. Trout derive an enormous amount of their energy by readily feeding on nymphs as they tumble in the water current. Having a well-stocked fly box filled with different nymph patterns is ideal. Popular nymph patterns which seem to work everywhere include hare's ears, pheasant tails, prince nymphs, beadhead caddis, and emergers. The key is not to exactly imitate the specific nymph, but to suggest both the silhouette, size, and coloration. Thus a pattern such as a prince nymph 
is popular because it represents a number of differing mayflies or smaller stonefly nymphs. While nymph fishing on the North Platte River, Colin learned some valuable rigging options from Brett at North Platte River Lodge. The North Platte is renowned for its brute strength and acrobatic jumps of its rainbow trout. That's great. That's a no question take. Got a little head shaking going on. Now, you want to keep him balanced right here because if he drops off this, we're running. Turn left. All right. And that fish is ripping all over the place. <laughs> These fish are as hot as you'll find, I think. There's not many. Most people that come here and fish have never felt fish that work like this. This is, this might be an 18 inch fish and he's, he's working you over, <laughs> which is great. Well, I heard the biggest whine is my arm sore. Yeah, it is, it is. He's using that current. Sure is. There he rolled a little bit. Yeah, we'll be lucky to squeeze 18 out of him. Yep. Yeah, we'll be lucky if that fish is 18. He's a great fish, but... High rod, perfect. Which fly did he take, the bottom one? He took that little PMD, and uh, this is a cut bow. He's crossbreed. And, uh, and he's still full of it. This isn't even a big one yet, is no, it? No, that's a nice fish. He's probably 18, 19. You can see the cut on him there. Yeah. Beautiful. Outstanding. Thank All you. All right. Well done. I want you uh, jump in there. Let's talk a little bit. Let's go up and have a look at that uh, current break and those rocks and talk about how we're fishing and the rig you're using here. Okay. Well, Brad, I think it's real important that uh, we describe a little bit of how you've got this set up and how we're fishing over here. But first, let's talk about the rig you've got set up here. Basically, we've got a short rig. We're fishing shallow water. The, the water we're fishing is less than what we're standing in. So it's, it's knee deep or less, and there's a couple pockets that are a little deeper. So we, we don't need a lot of length. So we've got a light weight. There's a number four and a number six shot there, so it's very little weight. But we don't need it to get down. We're, we're getting down. We're hitting the bottom occasionally. I like to put the first fly just a little bit closer to the lead than the second fly is to the first fly. And the reason for that is you take that first fly and it puts it right on the bottom with this. It, the closer you put it to the lead, the closer it's going to be to the bottom. Mm -hmm. This fly is going to be a little bit further away, so it's going to be, have a little more action because of the current and whatnot. So it's tumbling more. Mm -hmm. A little more tumbling. Okay. And our rig is, at this point, it's about five feet from indicator to lead. We're using a small indicator because we don't need much, because we don't have much weight. So we're five feet, we could probably go shorter. The shorter you go in this situation, when you're in shallow water like this, the more direct your strike's gonna be. If you've got 10 feet a liter and you're fishing three feet of water, that fish can eat it. He can run two feet before your indicator even registers. Yeah. It's critical that you have the right length of, of your indicator. In this particular case, I like five feet um, because it, it allows that fly to settle down before the indicator does any drag because we're fishing almost straight up at this point. When we turn out a little bit, it'll be fine because it's a little bit deeper out there. It's about three and a half, four feet deep out there. Probably the most popular rigging technique is known as the two to one system. Basically, for every one foot of depth, you use two feet of leader. Thus, if you're nymphing in four feet of water, your strike indicator or leader length should be set at eight feet from your fly. Another critical consideration for your nymph rig is to use weight to present your fly properly. Again, there are some excellent general guidelines to help anglers. Ideally, you want to use the minimal amount of weight to get your fly to the bottom. Usually, fish are holding in the bottom 20% of the water column. In order to effectively fish this area, we need to add weight to the leader and or fly pattern to reach this area. The rule of thumb is to add weight until you begin to snag or regularly make contact with the bottom. 
then you know that your pattern is in the feeding zone for fish. Basically, if you're not losing flies to snags, then you're probably not in the zone because you're not deep enough. It takes constant experimentation and changes to your rig to find the best system to accommodate both the water depth and the current speed in order to present your fly properly. In 2002, we met with Jeff Blood, who was one of the top nymph fly fishers for steelhead in northern Pennsylvania. Jeff explained a little about why it is critical to constantly change your rig and weight system for nymphing. One of the most neglected uh, principles of fishing by fly fishermen as well as conventional uh, tackle fishermen is to uh, vary their weight according to the fishing condition that you have and um, too much weight you'll be dragging on the bottom which does not give a natural presentation and actually pulls the fly out of the fish's zone and not enough weight will not get it down into the zone fast enough or keep it in the zone so that you get the longest drift and um, most of the really good fishermen are, are constantly changing their weight according to the characteristics of the pool so I'll start out fishing with what uh, my instincts tell me is the right amount of weight and if I'm not catching fish, most of the time I put more on rather than take it off. Of course, if it's shallow water and I can see that, then I will take it off, but most of the time I add a, another piece on until I figure it out. After time, you kind of develop an instinct where you can just look at the pool and say it requires one BB shot or two BB shots or sometimes even more. And uh, if you don't do this, you're going to diminish your catch rate substantially simply because you're not into the fish. And right there's an example of when you have it right, how you should be able to catch a, a fish with the right amount of weight on it. Let's see if we can beat you. That's what we've got is a little three pound male, maybe. They're fun. Okay, we should be able to get him out of here. Oh, he's a little bigger than that. It's probably more like four pounds. fly out of the fish's mouth. Just a nice little male fish. Can tell by the little bit of hook in his jaw right there. Anyway, let's put him back real gentle like. Strike indicators are loved by some and not by others. It is truly a matter of personal choice. Strike indicators are valuable tools because they easily help you detect strikes, which is particularly helpful to the new fly fisher who is still learning. There are a wide variety of strike indicators available. Choices should be made based on water depth, clarity and speed, plus the size of the indicator is impacted by the overall weight of the rig you are using. Over time and through experimentation, you will discover the best strike indicator options for the water you fish. There are a number of techniques related to rod position that will help you to properly present your nymph as well as detect strikes. Most people are familiar with the terminology high sticking, which is essentially the raising of your rod throughout the swing of the fly under the water. This helps lift the fly line off the water, thus minimizing drag on your fly. It is critical that your rod tip follow the fly line in the current through the drift. This helps to mitigate the impact of the currents on your presentation. Of equal importance is the need to closely watch your strike indicator or fly line for any hesitations or unusual movements which will transmit to you that a fish has picked up your offering. Here we go. Fish on. 
This underwater footage of a rainbow trout inhaling then spitting out a piece of debris clearly indicates why you must react quickly to any detected strikes. Just a simple flick of your wrist will set the hook if indeed it was a strike. Astute and experienced nymph fishers are constantly flicking their wrist, potentially setting the hook on any possible strikes. With practice, you will learn to detect even the most minute indication of a pickup of your offering by a fish. Ooh, that was a fish. Positioning during the drift is key to nymphing. Downstream nymphing is generally not a good idea since controlling the drift is problematic. As well, it is highly likely you will not get a solid hook set from this position. Positioning yourself slightly below or perpendicular to the fish is ideal for controlling the drift of your presentation. Upstream presentations are very effective, but it is imperative to tightly control the drift of your fly line. Watch how this angler positions himself to properly control the drift while situated below some fish holding water. He is constantly stripping in the line, keeping tight contact with his nymph while not impacting the speed. Nymph fishing is undoubtedly one of the most effective means of catching big trout or other species. Anglers make the mistake of believing nymph fishing is for only trout. Watch as I fight an enormous Pacific salmon caught on a small nymph on a Great Lake tributary near Toronto, Ontario. Side pressure. Boy, oh boy, we're passing a lot of fish on the way down. You must come out at this time of year, folks. This is the best time of year to catch these big fish. They, uh, they're a lot of fun. You're catching many, many big fish. You're not landing everyone as you've seen with other fish with me. I hope you enjoyed today's show and learned more about nymph fishing and why it's so important to anglers. For more information about this show and our series, please join us on the internet at www.thenewflyfisher.com. Okay, folks, this is a very big fish. As you can see, it's a buck, that kite, nice dog teeth. See where they took the fly. So these fish will hit, but it's out of aggression. It is not out of hunger. These, these fish are trying to get rid of the other male fish in the area and anything that's going to interfere with them, they're trying to get rid of. I'm going to just throw my rod over here on the grass, making sure I'm not going to hurt it. Again, one small look. Folks, we got a very large fish here. We've got a 30 pound fish here. And again, I'm holding it face first into the current. Oh, he's ready to go already. Very good. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mark Melnick from the new Fly Fisher Television Show. If you enjoyed that video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Also, we're uploading new videos all the time, so hit the bell to be notified when the next one goes up.